Well, I'd you like that intro. Let me turn some lights on here so I can see what the heck I'm doing. This is a new toy. It, it really shows up nice in uh, person, but not so good uh, with my webcam. But I thought I'd just play with it. Kind of an intro. Of course, it takes a while for it to go through the messages, and you can have up to eight messages. Um, so it made the intro really long. So I probably won't use it anymore. It's just way too long. So let me uh, let me turn this off so I don't stick my finger in it. There we go. So you can get that off of Amazon for about fifteen dollars. Pretty cool. Just a novelty. I thought it might uh, spice up my intro, but I don't know. Anyway, let me uh, zoom back out of here so like you can see what the heck we're gonna do today. Uh, come on there camera get back there get back okay now we gotta move things down a little bit there's what we're gonna do today this is a book that I think I did a review of this before but I looked and looked and looked could not find the review so if it's a duplicate review I, I apologize but I really like this book it's shortwave listening guidebook and even saying the name kind of reminds me of a review I did. It is by Harry Helms. This is the second edition. It was published in, coming up here in a second, in 1993, the second edition. But it's got information about shortwave listening that's pretty much universal and doesn't change too much over time. And it's it's a complete guide. It does, doesn't go into a lot of detail of everything, but it touches on everything that you need to know about shortwave listing. So I'm just going to briefly go over this book. I would recommend this book. Um, I'm sure it's out of publication right now, but you can probably either find it on Amazon in their used books, or you can find it on eBay. So here we go. We're going to open it up here and look at the index here, or table of contents, I think it's called. And I can see uh, I need to get my lighting a little better here because it's not showing up too well. Let me move. Yeah, that lights helps, but it's, of course it's right in my eyes. And then I guess we need to zoom back in a little bit. But I just. You know, you really don't have to see the text. I'm just kind of going to tell you about it. But the first chapter is, what is shortwave listening? And it tells you about different things you can find on the shortwave band. You know, the, the international broadcasters, ham operators, utility stations. And uh, then it even goes into FM broadcasts and TV DX you know, trying to receive FM stations from far away. And TV's kind of, TV DXing kind of gone away, but you can still do some TV DXing outside the United States because outside the United States, TV is still analog. And then it also talks about uh, pirate, listening to pirate and illegal radios, and some terminology, technology whatever and in the next chapter chapter two is understanding the shortwave bands you know what what are the bands where to find things kind of a kind of just an introduction then there's a um, chapter three is on selecting a shortwave radio now some of this information is is out of date for the newer radios but it's good if you're if you're into older radios you know, or you're looking to buy a used radio, this gives you some things to uh, look at as far as the features and stuff like that. Then in Chapter 4 is antenna and antennas. We're always interested on that, you know, how to make a simple antenna, for instance, preamplifiers and pre-selectors. Chapter 5 is on radio propagation, something that, to me, that's still a mystery in that it's you can't control it, 
and you you never know how conditions for listing on shortwave are going to be. You know, there's indicators that will tell you, well, it should be good today or tonight, but you never know. Um, major international shortwave broadcasters, again, a lot of these broadcasters have dropped out, so some of this information is old. Domestic shortwave broadcasting in various parts of the country. Utility stations, that's that's what I'm into, is listening to utility stations. I'm still trying to uh, receive a long wave station, have not been successful. I listen to maritime communications. Um, that can be kind of interesting, uh, fishing fleets and stuff like that, or the Coast Guard, and then so on down. Okay, let's see what else. We've got a lot of chapters here. Other radio activity. It mentions ham radio, of course. Um, I'm sorry for the poor lighting and not too good uh, video. And in uh, mysterious radio stations, such as pirate stations, it goes into detail in Chapter 10. The hobby of shortwave listing, some of the things you can do. Uh, there are shortwave listing clubs. You can send a letter to a broadcaster and give them a report. And this used to be really big in like the 60s and 70s. As a matter of fact, I did that. You'd send them a report. They send you a little card back with some graphics on it saying, okay, we got your report and it's been registered. So it's still going on, but not as much. And then some appendices of uh, international phonetics, cue signals used in Morse code, and other things like that. So I'm going to go over a couple of chapters and point out some things. Okay. And it gives you it gives you an introduction to everything. It gives you an introduction to listening to utility stations, pirate stations, international broadcast. And then it, in, in this chapter here is the chapter two, understanding of the shortwave bands. And it tells you, you know, what, where the bands are, um, where the effective time to listen. Talks about single sideband. And then it has, see I can find it here. Then it has a guided tour of the shortwave bands. And it goes through each of the bands, starting at uh, below 150 megahertz. Tells you a little bit what's down there or maybe what was down there 150 to 540 kilohertz and then your regular medium wave band just above your medium wave band uh, 2 megahertz to 2.8 kilohertz and so on and so on and it gives you a brief description of what you should expect to find there so, for instance, if we go to in one area that I like to listen to is, is uh, 900 megahertz, excuse me, 9 megahertz or 9,000 kilohertz and above. And it breaks it down into 8.815 and 9.04. Talks about that band. There's another one, 9.5 to 9.9 .9 megahertz, which is the 31 meter band, which that's where I have most of my luck receiving international broadcasts, such as China Radio, uh, India Radio, and such. And it goes on, the other bands, uh, talks about, in some cases, the band used by the United States Air Force, Right there. I know you can't. I know you can't read it, and, and that's a reason for for you to get this book for yourself. I'm just trying to give you a little inter introduction. Now, then, in the next chapter, let me find the beginning of the chapter is selecting a shortwave receiver, and talks about talks about your basic receiver. Here is um, the Sagen ATS 606 right there. Also, uh, Radio Shack sold this radio. Very good radio. 
tells you what kind of characteristics to look for in a radio. Here it talks about sec sensitivity and how important that is when you're looking at buying a radio. Here's a chapter on selectivity of a radio, another important factor. Here's an option that some radios have, which is bandpass tuning. Tells you what it is, how important it is. Memories in multiple tuning circuits or multiple tuning options. BFOs for uh, single sideband reception, why you need a BFO. It goes, yeah, here's a section on synchronous detection. I read that uh, this morning and uh, kind of gave me an idea of things I can try to maybe make the synchronous detection circuits on the radios I've got work better. Yeah, let's move around. Here's here's a section, section uh, chapter four on antennas and accessories, and it tells you about the theory of the antennas. Um, here's a simple 1.6 to 30 megahertz outdoor antenna. So that's an all-band antenna, basically a wire, a long wire antenna. And it goes into different types of antennas. As a matter of fact, here's a, a section on antennas for broadcast band and long wave. I need to read that. See what it says about long wave reception. What kind of antenna I need. Here's a loop antenna. I'm really interested in trying uh, some of the better quality loop antennas, such as the Sony loop antenna. And uh, this is a... Kawaya, K I W A, I probably pronounced that wrong. I'm not very good at pronouncing. I'm sorry, guys. It's not very good at it. Um, because, you know, in my office, if I want to use an antenna in my office, I struggle with a lot of RF noise from various things. Okay, moving right along. Then it talks, and it's got a whole section about various broadcast stations international broadcast stations, what they do, shows you an example of a QSL card. That one's not very exciting. Oh, there's one that's nice and exciting. Radio RSA, which is South Africa. Unfortunately, I think they're off the air. That was a nice QSL card that you get. Now, here's one from Radio New Zealand International, which I think is still on the air. I, I haven't been successful at receiving them. But they shall still show up in some of the updated shortwave list, uh, listing um, databases. Okay. There's another chapter here in the back that kind of caught my eye. See if I can find it again. Okay, in this chapter, let me go back to the beginning of the chapter. This is uh, Chapter 8, Utility Stations. And as I said, <coughs> that's one of the things I'm interested in. It's got some tables in here that shows you some frequencies to listen to. Like here's the international civil aviation frequencies. Again, some of this data is a little outdated, but a lot of it is still very valid. Then there was something, another set of tables in the back here. I should have marked it. Maybe I passed it. Oh boy. I hate when I do that. Yeah, I did pass it. Okay, we'll see if we can find it again before I waste too much of our time. No, do, do, do. Okay, here's, here's some tables. Hey, here we go, here we go, here we go. Okay, uh, these are the ones I missed. Here he is, long wave beacons, which people have told me, even though I can't receive any long wave stations, um, I might be able to receive some of these beacons. So that's something I need to try. 
Here's some uh, single sideband marine radio frequencies. Coast Guard here, ship stations. And I'm getting reports that people are still hearing communications on these bands. And I think that was... Oh, here's another one. That's the, the beauty of this book. And like I say, some of the data is outdated, but most of it probably still good. Here is a table of standard time and frequency stations throughout the world, which those stations are always good to find out how conditions are doing. Because they're, if they're still on the air, then they're all usually on the air most of the time. For instance, somebody has told me about the one up in uh, Canada, which is at 3.330 megahertz. And uh, I use that a few times to give me an indication, you know, it, our band condition is good. There's also, also some in uh, Asia and Europe. There's a, quite a few of them in China or Japan. And then, of course, here's WWV at 15 megahertz and should be up there. Yeah, there's 10 megahertz. And there's the one that I didn't realize what it was. Let's see if I can actually show it. There's two, two stations for WWV at 10 megahertz. One's in Hawaii, Hawaii and one's in Fort Collins. It also says that there's one at 10 megahertz in Japan. Now I have to ask my friend Spencer who lives over that way to see if he can receive that station, see if it's still on the air. And this, like I say, this is standard time. Typically, these stations are 24-7, so you can tune there and see if you're receiving them. So that was the other table I was looking for. Oh, this is another one kind of interesting, is in-flight channels that airlines use when they're away from land. So it's they need long distance communications and they use HF. So here's some frequencies to listen to for HF. Again, don't know if they're still applicable, but it, it'd be interesting, you know, to put these in your radios and see if you can hear them. Make a little, uh, put an entry in your log, hey, I got this. And tell me about it. Tell us all about it. Hey, look what I found. Okay, so that's the uh, review of the shortwave listening guidebook. I apologize if I already did another review. I know I didn't say the same words this time that I did before. So if you enjoyed this show, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Thanks for watching, and have a great day. Bye-bye.